my friends, it's Pat Sloan here. So I have a couple of things first and then on the second half of the video, I am going to debunk a quilt myth. I thought, you know, maybe I need to do a series of debunking quilt myths. Now the, the, the thing that happens is um, we learn things from people and then uh, we may hear them one way, we may hear them a different way, and then all of a sudden they become like folklore or uh, mandatory things when in reality there's no basis for them being done that way. Uh, there's no, no reason that they have to be. It's just that this sort of folklore has happened and, and it's, it's, it continues on. It's a myth. It's a, it's a legend. <laughs> folklore, quilting folklore. But I want to debunk these myths. Uh, and I just thought, well, maybe that'd be fun. Maybe that'd be fun to take these every so often and just look, they dissect them and explain why they don't really have to be done like that or done that way. Um, so that'll be the second half. But first, I, uh, I did a little segment the other day, but it didn't fit into that video, it got a little too long, so I kept it for today. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about these aqua squares uh, that I'm doing, the aqua and white squares. You all have sent me all these gorgeous, gorgeous aqua squares, they're two and a half inch squares. I have a, a whole little tutorial on how to make a quilt while you're making something else. And I have quite a few of them, and I keep thinking to myself, oh, I really should start setting these. Up, you know, like setting them into a quilt. And I wonder like how many there are, but before we do that, I had to sort of restructure a little bit. So let me, let me show you that. And while, you, while I show you that, I'm gonna count these while you're watching. Here they are. I am doing two, two squares at a time, building up to a four block at a time, four by four block to build these squares that will then all go into one quilt. I've done multi, I've done a red one, I've done a green one, I've done a multicolored one, I've done a red, white, and blue that I had to put a piece block in the middle of it. And so this is like my fourth or fifth one, fifth one, fifth one now, uh, which is the aqua. And originally I thought I wanna make it as big as to go on my um, queen size bed. Uh, and I still might do that or I might soon just stop and sew it all together. So I don't know. But let me show you what kind of occurred, two things that kind of occurred to me. Uh, one is I wanna show you that I had little little parts left from some blocks. You know, this is the, the, beach, the beach fabric. And so what I did is I just sewed them together. Do you see? Uh, because this piece wasn't quite big enough, so I just sewed it together. And now these are all two and a half inch squares. That's my go-to size for this. I love a two and a half inch square. And so then what I, what I can do here is just trim this. I've got to trim it on three sides. I've got to trim this one too. Okay, and then there we are. So now I have this that will go on this stack because what I've got uh, I had to, I have a little I had a little issue here the other day with the stack because I felt like I kept pulling so let me just put the one block I felt like I kept pulling like the same fabrics out over and over and uh, that was annoying like I would just go to pull here and I there, there's duplicates a lot of you sent me these fabrics and uh, you know, you sent me multiples, so they would kind of be stacked together and I would like restack the pile and I would just keep getting the same ones. So I had to take this all out. Like I have, this is all the white and the rest of this basket is aqua. Tons and tons still of aqua squares. And so I had to take them out and sort of shuffle them around and just pull, and what I did is I pulled a section to work with. So I just pulled a working group so that I could do a few more blocks and just not think about it. And basically I sew these two at a time as I'm sewing other things. I'll just sew two blocks. What? Look at this. I cut the corner off. Can you see that? I cut the corner off that white one. That might not work. That's a, that's a really big chop. That's more than a quarter inch chopped off. Okay, so I'll have to add a little something to him. Add it, put him over there. Um, but I'll sew two at a time until I get four, and then another four, another four, another four, and I alternate light, aqua, light, aqua. And that has been working perfectly. So that was my plan. Those were all the things that I was uh, working on and doing lately. Now I'm going to move this all away somewhere. 
I don't know where I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it somewhere, and then I will get the applique out. So how many do you think that I have made so far? Tick tock, tick tock. I have 120. So I went and put a few of the blocks up on the wall because I think we need to see how far they go. Now, if I, I'm gonna use my trusty calculator. If I wanted to do an 80 by 80 quilt, I would need 10 across. So it's eight by 10 equals 80. Eight by 10 equals 80. You know, eight, so I have enough. So basically I have enough now. I can do, let's see, what could I do? Let's see, eight times 11. Eight times 11 is 88, of course. Uh, so that would be a really decent size quilt. And then I still have a few extras that I could either do, you know, maybe, maybe I won't do a bed size quilt. I don't know, 88, that's pretty good. Uh, then I could just maybe do the extras that I have here into a little, maybe a baby quilt. That might be a nice size, a nice size baby quilt to, to donate. So let me just, let me just finish putting them up so we can take a look at all of the aqua glory. <laughs> look how awesome this is. Oh my goodness. I am just in love. Oh, and so this is eight by nine. So if I wanted to do nine by nine, I still have more. I could just sew eight by nine. So it's just a little bit longer. I could do, I could do nine by nine. I have, I still have more. So here's up close just to see a few of them. So you can see, oh, I just saw one that's turned right. There should always be a white, there we go. A white in the, in that top left corner when I place it. But there are directional things, they're not all, all you know the right direction I'd have to go through and check that and see that I don't have stuff that's too close together but I'm thinking it's starting to be time starting to be time let's talk about that I will jump up and down jump up and down <laughs> it just is like tickles me to death to see those all together I've been so excited with these aqua squares so if I even if I do that's eight by nine even if I do nine by nine I still have a group of these left and I think I'll just put them together for a baby quilt and put a border on it and uh, that will be I think that'll be a great use for this so that'll be a way to use up the rest of these I had no idea I had like blown past what was needed uh, like, okay, I, I'm, I'm thinking now, like, I just don't know. I just think, I think this is it. I think this is it. Start sewing it together. So let me know what you think, if that is what you would do. So, which means it's like, ah, oh, I don't know. Maybe I need a marathon. Just get so, so some chunks together. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So a couple, couple other things today on our calendar. Uh, it was that the, the 10th, which is on the weekend, so we won't have a video, but the 10th is Grandparents Day. And I think that it would be lovely to see quilts that you've done, like that have something to do with your grandparents. You know, for me, I did um, Grandma's Kitchen, uh, which is right here. And Grandma's Kitchen was a quilt along that we did that I think I will eventually reboot and we'll do that one again together because it has got so much great memories. But you have ones that might have pictures, you might have um, for like maybe an anniversary, you might have done it with some tea towels or linens or just things that, as a tribute to your grandparents. Maybe you gave the quilt to your grandparents, you have a picture of that. So today it's a celebration of our grandparents and sharing some quilt that you made uh, that, that has to do with your grandparents. Okay, what else? So I was going through spools, going through spools and decided that I had to find some of the sort of empties. And this is, this is what I came up with. Arr, get that out of here. The, I, I have some that are just low. So I already, already used these, got this group done. But then I thought, you know, well, what else do I have that's almost done? 
So see that? Like there's there's almost that's that one's almost done. This pink one's almost done. This is these are great for piecing. Uh, now this light blue is not really almost done, but I will put it in my rotation for piecing so that it can be used up. And the orange is the same way. It's not almost done, but it is close. And I can piece with all of these. If I'm using something like I probably wouldn't piece the any white fabrics with these, but things that are not white. So I am getting some of these spools you know used up I don't need to be keeping these that are so low I can go ahead and use them use them to move them on move them on baby <laughs> it is also a table runner or table topper love day so I I have a book tantalizing table toppers that CNT publishing uh, has continued to print for me after Martin Gale's business uh, closed so they picked up this book and they picked up here it is my teach me to quilt book so both of these are still in print now and I appreciate that so much so I want to show you a quilt uh, in the you know through the end of this year I'll be t pulling the quilts out from this book and showing them to you again because they are great quilts and things that you can use for um, all kinds of projects whether they're for done in the colors that that are in the book or whether you have other fabrics and this one is particularly a favorite of mine because it is so easy and fun to do this one is really a blast squares and rectangles and then put some sort of fun fabric like I did the polka dots you know if you find a polka have a nice medium sized polka dot like that you can do that and this is real fall oriented and so I think now it is going to go on my dining room table um, I have a round dining room table so and I'm going to put that in the center and put my little display thing on top uh, and enjoy it uh, out. And so in the book, in the book Tantalizing Table Toppers, here it is. It is called You Pick because I thought that those look like berry baskets. There's kind of a story with all the quilts in here and uh, I thought they kind of reminded me of the shape of berry, berry baskets that you get at the farmer's market. So you pick, you pick your own, right? We do that often at the farmer's markets. All right, another few things before we get, well, do I have anything else? We're gonna debunk a myth. Let's just debunk a myth. <laughs> Let's get to it, all right. What I wanna do is debunk a quilt myth that's out there that there has to be either top and bottom borders put first or side borders put, put first. That there is some magical reason your quilt needs them one way or the other. Uh, to start it off, I don't think it matters uh, any way. You can put the top and bottom or you can put the sides. But there are ways and reasons people pick, but in the end your quilt is going to look the same whether you've done it one way or the other for, for the most part, unless it's fabric dependent. So first of all, this is a square. So in the middle I've got a 24 inch square. I've got five inch borders. And so if I put uh, the borders on, let me just get in a little bit closer. So I'm putting the borders on and putting the side border on. I have to lock them in here to the grid. You can't see the grid, but there's actually an invisible grid. Okay, so now I have a 24 by 24. And I have put the top and bottom on first and the sides on second. This actually, because you have a line right here, uh, right here see the that line this is makes it look a little bit more vertical if you want to make it look a little bit more horizontal there you go do you see that does that look like that you see so now you've got the horizontal as the focus and depending on your fabric that could really make a difference if it's a very blendy big print you're not going to see that but you might see it on something with a very um, like a like a solid or a tonal or something like that you're going to get a stronger vertical image if you put the sides on a lot of people say they were taught they were told uh, just because somebody told you this doesn't mean it's true uh, that you have to put the sides on first that just means your quilt would look like that and for me, a lot of times, I don't want it looking squatty. I want the quilt looking more slender with my sides longer than the top and the bottom. So I'd be putting your top and bottom on first. Now, with a square, it's kind of moot, you know, in a way. Uh, but what if it's a rectangle? So, whoops, let's just build a rectangle. 
and I will okay so I'll make one that's just a little bit longer so there we go I'm gonna put the bottom guy down here and now my other side border I don't know what size that middle is it doesn't matter I'm just doing a visual okay so it, let me just get rid of this a second here we go now I in this case put my the top and bottom border and then the long side border so you get that nice slender look to your to your border he's not snapped in there bothers me okay so now you get that nice long slender look but what if I did it the other way what if I said okay these are going to be these side borders this is what a lot of people were told you had to put your side borders on first there's no no logical reason for that none uh, that your your quilt will behave the same way it will sew the same way it will wash the same way it'll be cuddled and used the same way but this is what some people have been told so I'm just going to show you here all right so if I did it this way okay there you go now you can see well, it's not quite snapped all right so there there it is all right you're gonna have to bear with me and I gotta I do not have a snapped what is going on here oh it's because this guy's not down here okay, we've got to make it we've got to make it we've got to do it people alrighty so here we go now the the top and bottom are on second and you're not going to get as much as that slender look to make the elongated look because these are shorter now you might have issues where the designer wants you to do it this way because of your your width of fabric so maybe with the fabric it is more economical to do the top because like in this case this is 33 inches long uh, and that means these are shorter 43 inches long so that you would buy if you wanted to buy this on length of fabric like a, how you know how much yardage would you need Oops, I'm not going to rotate. Okay, so if this was yardage, uh, you would need, you know, like 44, 45 inches of fabric. But if I was doing it the other way, where the longer one was here, okay, bear with me. So I'm just going to mock it. Okay, now if I rotate that, that's longer. So if I want to buy length of fabric to do this, it is more economical to put my top and bottom on. It does not mean that my quilt acts different, it doesn't sew different, it doesn't fall apart if you don't do this, but you will have to buy less fabric if you put the top and bottom on second and you do the sides first. So that is um, one, just one of the interesting things that you learn about when you're designing. Uh, so there are reasons for things, but there's no absolute. There's very few, very few absolutes in quilting. Um, you know, if you want to, if you don't want to sew a fourth inch seam, you don't have to. Uh, your quilts are going to have a little bit of an issue depending on what you're you're making. But uh, other than that, there's a lot, a lot of variety. So I wanted to sort of debunk this um, myth that you have to put borders on in a certain order. Uh, I recommend you follow the pattern because the designer has made some decisions for you, you know, to help you out, whether it's to help you out with fabric so you don't have to buy so much or whatever, whatever the deal is. So, okay, there's just a little debunking for you. I hope what you get out of that little uh, walk through of how I look at borders will to be will to see that there are options and there really isn't one set way that has to be done but there are reasons you might choose to do one way over another whether it's just for a visual impact or it might be for being uh, more frugal so you don't have to buy extra fabric that you don't need so that you do you know take the shortest lengths that you can and in doing that it depends on what size and your, you know your quilt so I hope that helped a little bit now I want to remind you that on Monday we start the wiener dogs you know that's this pattern and I have three options so let me show you my three options of fabric uh, one is this is the, the one I'm going to use this fabric line for the block Wednesday, Midnight in the Garden. And it has, let's just get close on all of these. So it has black and gold and pink and some white. And I would um, put it on my Promise Me. Uh, no, no, this is this Promise Me. Uh, no, this is Porch Swing. Excuse me, I got 
so confused. So there we go. I would put it on there. So I don't know if I'll do that one since I'm going to be using that fabric. <clears throat> I found this one that I think is so darling. It is called Little Swan. It's called Little Swan. And I think that on blue, because it has this gray blue and then navy, which you can see the navy against there, gold and pinks, and then um, a little bit of that, of a different gold, that same gold, a little lighter gold here, a little bit more caramely color, like a caramel color there. See the little bit of difference. <gasps> so, so pretty. That, that is just sweet as can be. And then the last one I looked at is the ABC, which has critters and things on it. And I thought oh, it'd be fun to use something with a bit more pattern. Uh, and so this is my Harmony wide back. And if I do this as blacks and whites and greens and yellow golds, light blue, and some sort of more cream color, which still shows up against there. Um, I don't know. I haven't read the, the pattern yet to see if you don't use all of the strips, you know, so I might be able to get away with leaving out um, maybe the, the white. But those are the three that I'm looking at. So I would love to see or hear. You can just tell me what, um, and if you just, just tell me at YouTube or you can show me a picture at Quilt Along with Pat Sloan, my Facebook group of what jelly roll you're thinking of for Monday. So I have to pick. I have to pick by Monday. Uh, or I actually start probably has to start mine on the weekend. So yes. Okay. There we go. Aqua loveliness and a quilt myth debunked. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan zone. I will see you online. <music>